My dad used to say, if you can get a computer program working, it's not really state of the art. As soon as something works, people have ideas to make it work better, but those ideas start out not working at all. This paper came out just a few months ago, but I did get its ideas working. So there's probably another paper coming out soon, even more complicated. Uh, let's, let's talk about RTD3. But before we talk about RTD3, let's talk about why I need it. Last time I presented my predator-prey reinforcement learning project, it looked like this. The blue prey here is frozen, it can't move. The red predator here is moving at a constant speed, and at every time step, it gets an observation, a picture of what it's looking at. The predator's last eight observations are fed through Actor and Critic, a reinforcement learning algorithm with two models, sort of like our brains have two halves. The actor chooses how much the predator turns left or right, and the critic guesses what reward the predator will get for it. If the predator eventually catches the prey by bumping into it within a time limit, that's a reward. Otherwise, the reward is negative, uh, that's, a, that's a punishment. After hours and hours of training in this little maze, the predator can catch the prey quite often, even starting from far away. But if it works, it's not state-of-the-art, so let's overcomplicate it. <laughs> First of all, inputting the last eight observations shows I didn't quite understand recurrent layers at all. Why use the previous eight observations when we could use all the previous observations? A recurrent layer expects two inputs, the most recent observation and a hidden state which represents all the previous observations. For the first observation, there is no hidden state representing previous observations yet, so the hidden state is initialized as just zeros. The recurrent layer gives an output to the next layer of the model, but it also outputs a hidden state representing the first observation. Next time, we give the recurrent layer the second observation and that hidden state representing the first observation. It gives an output to the next layer and makes another hidden state representing the first two observations, and so on. Eventually, we give the recurrent layer the 100th observation and a hidden state representing the first 99 observations. Uh, oh, and, and the actor and critic both have a recurrent layer, so the predator has two hidden states to keep track of. Okay, okay. Uh, now let's complicate in another direction. Professor Juntani at OIST had two suggestions. The predator should choose how fast it's moving, and it should have an energy which goes down faster when the predator moves faster. The predator shouldn't lose after some arbitrary time limit. It should lose when it runs out of energy. These changes introduce interesting choices. We should be seeing the predator and prey deciding if sprinting is worth the energy. And I eventually got it to work uh, by adding speed, energy, and previous action to the observation state. So now an observation is a picture and four numbers. But the training was unreliable, and when it worked, it took hours to work. Often the predator would just slow down to a stop because its punishment would seem minimized. Another PhD student at OIST suggested RTD3, recurrent Twin Delayed Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient, described in the paper Recurrent Off-Policy Baselines for Memory-Based Continuous Control. RTD3 is a much more complicated version of the actor-critic method. Let us begin, okay. <clears throat> so far, the Predator has been training on policy. It would play an episode of the Predator-Prey game, train on that game, and forget about it. It shouldn't train on anything twice, because it would have to backpropagate its own backpropagation. It's complicated. With RTD3, the predator is now training off-policy. 
It plays episodes of the Predator Prey game to collect memories in a replay buffer, and it can train on those memories any number of times. It's trained with experience replay, which means the actor and critic experience situations again. It's like a professional athletes watching videos of their old performances. Oh yeah, I remember making those mistakes. I know how to do much better now. Because you have to watch yourself repetitively over and over and over again doing the same thing. You can fool us once, but you will never fool us twice. But, ooh, remember, we're using recurrent layers, and those need hidden states to understand the context of an observation. We could save hidden states in the replay buffer too, just like we're saving observations. But that's not recommended. A recurrent layer in training would be getting a hidden state it made back when the memory was saved, and the recurrent layer has changed since then. So a replay buffer isn't enough. I'm using a sequential replay buffer, which saves whole episodes beginning to end. In off-policy training, we sample whole episodes and replay them start to finish. If off-policy training was the only change we made, this wouldn't be an RTD3. It would just be an RDDPG, a recurrent deep deterministic policy gradient. To make an RTD3, we need to give the critic some advantages over the actor. If an actor improves too quickly, the, the critic might get stuck on a mesa, so to speak. The actor puffs out its chest and says, Oh, look, this action is impressive, huh? And the critic doesn't know any better than to say, Yeah, I guess so, because that's all the actor ever does. And that's all the two ever learn. In RTD3, the actor is trained less often than the critic. The actor's training has noise added to it, and there are two critics. <laughs> the, the most pessimistic critic is the one in charge. Oh, and, and by the way, a training off policy requires target models, copies of the actor and critic, um, critics. So now, instead of keeping track of two hidden states, one for the actor and one for the critic, We've got six hidden states, one for the actor, two for the critics, and three for the target actor and critics. Oh, and I'm using long short-term memory, which has two different kinds of hidden states. So the predator has 12 hidden states. Okay, complicated, 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 but it works sometimes, not every time, but sometimes. To make it a little more reliable, I took one last complicated step. I make the Predator's first memories myself. That's right, I can show the Predator how it's done. Check this out. Sploosh. Oh, I, I like the splooch. I, I, think, I think the sploosh is my favorite part of the episode. So I, I'm going to uh, give a presentation of uh, having a, a professional supply some uh, observations for uh, reinforcement learning. So if I uh, click from here to here, I'm going to be loading uh, a predator and a prey that uh, have, have done some training. Oh, yeah, I promise you it's loading. There we go. Okay, and, uh, and now if I, if I run this, it's asking me if I want to, to play a simulation by hand. And I do, I do want to play a simulation by hand, so let's see what that looks like. Well, this is this is the GUI, the graphical user interface, and uh, I'm, I'm starting the game with the predator as far away from the prey as possible. Uh, this is uh, Pie Bullet, by the way. I have an episode about that. I have a Talking Squid video episode about a lot of stuff. Um, but we're, we're not supposed to be able to see uh, all this from above. Here, this is this is what the predator is looking at. <laughs> the the predator is just looking. It looks like it's looking at a wall. So it's it's looking it's looking at this corner here. Uh, so if I say I want you to change your yaw, I want to I want you to move a little bit, and I want you to go fast. Well, it it moved a little bit, and we're getting a different kind of observation. So let's uh let's keep doing that. 
oh look now i just i just turned a little bit to the left and now we can see a little a little thing that's blue way over here so let's let's go toward the blue we know we uh we squidlings outside of the simulation we understand that uh, the predator is going to get a good reward if it collides with the prey so let's uh let's move a little bit to the right we'll, we'll turn a little bit to the right and then we'll move fast i think i i moved too far to the too far to the right so let's move a little bit to the left and there let's let's just keep moving forward oh but i forgot i forgot to mention the the prey it's moving <laughs> the, the prey is moving as well um so every time we take a step, the prey is taking a step too. So the prey might see us. The prey has already been trained. So every time you know we're looking at it, it might be looking at us, and it might say, "Oh, I don't, I don't want him to come near me. I want to go that direction." So let's let's. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so let's let's move a little bit, a little bit to the right, and keep keep going forward. Oh, there he is. So. Oh. Oh, he's he's trying to go behind behind the green thing. There 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 are green walls and if if he gets behind the green wall, we won't be able to see him anymore, and that's a disadvantage for the predator. <laughs> so, let's let's keep going. Oh, no, he he turned around. He he actually decided, "No, he's he's coming for me. I'd better turn around and run this way." So, well, let's let's turn a bit and and we can there he is. We're we're coming for you. You're not getting away. <laughs> so so when I've when I've been playing uh, Wario World or or Chibi Robo, I, I was training for this. <laughs> I was I was training to to do the reinforcement learning for my robots. Uh, so and now this is the final chase. Oh, and and there we go. I caught him. I caught him. And uh, and there's our reward. Uh, the 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 red reward is the predator's reward, and the the prey's reward is the the blue reward. So over time, uh, the, the the predator said, "Oh, I'm getting really close to this guy, and I'm I eventually am gonna touch him. So I'm gonna get a nice reward." And the prey says, "Oh, this guy's getting really close. I don't think I can make it." <laughs> so he's he's getting punished. Unfortunately, that's that's how it works. Oh, what an experience. Okay, but go go back to the squid. I am the squid, but go back go back to the squid. Okay. Sploosh. Sploosh is how it works. Sploosh again. This looks a little biological, doesn't it? The 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 predator sees the prey and chases it. The prey sees the predator and runs away. Eventually, I want this maze to be more complicated. That's a that's a more interesting interaction. But I, I also have so many other ideas to make this more complicated. What if a collision didn't end the game? The predator just takes some of the prey's energy. And, and what if there were multiple predators and multiple prey? So they had to work together or, or even betray each other. Ooh. And what if they could have kids? I'm imagining a long, long simulation in a big, big arena where generations upon generations of predator and prey duke it out. That sounds pretty state-of-the-art. <laughs> Buh bye By the way, I've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash thinkster. I want to thank all these squidlings and elder squids. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>